Next, we will do a map of the relief. And if you don't have information about the faults, I will show you a interesting way that you can get some information about that. So we will start with a new map. We'll go to grid and we will click on biograms. Now, biograms is one of the most important part of the processing of graphical data. Um, because of that, I will dedicate a full episode to that probably the next time. And um, also want to say that Surfer has an excellent way of processing biograms. Biograms will give you the national orientation or asymmetry or an isotropy of your data. For now, we just going to make the biogram. Just look at the way we do it. We select the map as easting, northing elevation. That is okay. We click accept and we get our biogram. There are several things that I do for cosmetics. Like I like to leave just the name of elevation. I eliminate the subtitle. And one thing that is very important, I will click on the variance. And our objective is to find a curve represented by this blue line that will intersect this data line as close as possible to the left. Again, I will not go into an explanation. I will try rapidly to find the best model. And usually if you just go to model and click on how to fit, and click OK, it will try to do it. But in this case, it didn't work. So I know there are three types, three basic types of biograms. So I'm going to try. First, I'm going to remove everything. I'm going to add an exponential one and click on how to fit and OK. And I get a line that is more or less what I'm looking intersects the graphic here at the left, but it's not the best way to go. So I will try to remove that. I will try the logarithmic and click out of it. And this one shows a much better result, okay? And for the time being, I will just use this biogram. Now that I have the biogram, I go into grid data. I select my table. It's okay, it's north elevation. I will select green as my main method. I will click next. I will get the biogram from the image behind, so it will get adjusted. Then I can skip to the end and I will name this file elevation key. Then I will just click on fin finish. Now, if I open a new page and I will create a new map, like a contour map, using my elevation creating. This is the map that I obtained. Now, as I said, I wanted to determine the possible location of faults, etc. So for that, we go to grid and click on calculus. In calculus, we will go to the ring model and select aspect. We will select our greeting file, elevation creating, and we will call this aspect. And we will click OK. And let me eliminate the previous map. Just leave the map of the aspects. And I'm going to change the color, the, gray, the type of color, so it will be clear. Instead of using a grayscale, I'm going to use a rainbow. Okay. 
And what I'm looking here, are, we want to get the red spot. These are the ones that are indicating the strongest changes in the aspects of the slopes, which will probably mean the faults. So say, OK, and then I will go here in levels to advance edit levels. And I'm going to eliminate all those. Let me, we leave the yeah, 62, we'll leave to 80 only. And then we click apply. And here you can see where are the possible faults. So to do that, go to Map Tools and we will click on Digitize. And we will digitize the possible location of our faults. So I will assume that there is one fault here. So I'm going to click one, two. That's my first fault. Then I will leave a space, blank space here. Then my next fault will be this one, this one, two. Probably there is one from here to here, from here to here. And it's probably one going this way. I'm not going to make this too complicated. That's it. So we have one, two, three, four, and five faults. So for that, I will put a, the course at the one, I will press enter, go back and put the number five, which means that there are five faults. And then I will click file, save as, and I will save it as a BLN file, which I call it faults. Now that we have our faults, we can go back to our variogram. And we need to do a new greeting, but this time we cannot use greeting, we will use inverse distance because inverse distance will allow us to take into consideration the faults. So again, grid, grid data, we select inverse distance, we select our data, easting, northing elevation, click next, and here, in the anisotropy, we will use the anisotropy is two, and the angle is 17.73. And then here in fault, we will just open our fault file. And then we can click skip to end, and we will save this greeting file as Elevation ID with faults and save. And if we open a new map with this home contour, you see the faults here. For the rest of the study, we will be using this faults, and if we want to add these faults to our base map, it's very simple, we just, we just can click on this, copy, go back to base map, press paste, and just add the contours at the base. We need to make the, right here. and you see the faults here. Again, uh, the elevation, we can click on the levels. Okay. One. Usually in geology, we use the rainbow, which is the normal coloration that we are used to use. And you can, of course, change the 
elevation interval. For example, you may want to do the color, the contour intervals, not every ten, not every five, but every ten, or you can make it not every ten, not every five, but every two. Um, that's it. That is how we do the elevation model using ID screening so we can take into consideration the fault. Another map that is useful to do with the elevation is the 3D model, so 3D surfaces, or also color relief, but if we go 3D surface with fault, this is the map that we obtain, and we can, of course, rotate it like this. And also, we can have a 3D view of the model, which can also be rotated. And you can see here the fault. This is a very useful view if you want to prepare a presentation. So that's it. That is how we deal with the elevations. And on our next presentation, we will be talking a lot about virograms. So until next time, have a great day. I think these videos are brilliant and I'm sure you will like them too. Please like, comment and subscribe and don't forget to click the notification bell.